everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. The questions in the chat, as Hannah said, you can submit them at any time and I'll be happy to do my best to address them. But I want to give you an overview of what we're going to cover in this webinar. So we're going to look at how Boolean operators function in general. And then we're going to apply them specifically to the EBSCOhost platform with FSTA, uh, the database for the sciences of food and health. And so we're going to look at some idiosyncrasies in the platform and some ways that you can use Boolean operators so that they really do focus your search and make it find the research that you're looking for as efficiently as possible. And we're going to run the gamut from some very basic um, things about Boolean operators to the ways that you can use them in quite sophisticated searches. And so, again, this is aimed really at all levels of um, searchers. And I'm really happy to get uh, questions. I can't say it often enough um, along the way if you do have any that come up. So I will dive in and you'll be grateful to know that there's only two slides um, and we've already seen one of them and this is the second. And so here we are just looking at an overview using Venn diagrams, which is the general way that people uh, try to illustrate how Boolean operators work about the three main ones that we like to use in building searches. And so and is a Boolean operator that is absolutely basic to searching. It is one where you have one concept, so in this case, aroma, and then you have a second concept, chocolate. And if you combine those two terms, aroma and chocolate, with the Boolean operator and in a search box, then that means that the results that you get will all contain both the word aroma and the word chocolate. So that means that you won't be getting results that are about like the texture of chocolate or the composition of lipids in chocolate, unless they also have information about the way that chocolate smells. So you're saying specifically, that's the question that I'm looking at, the way that chocolate smells, aroma and chocolate. Or is kind of the opposite. So you use or to combine two terms which have something in common. So they may be pretty direct synonyms, but they may just be sort of synonyms for your own purposes. So they work to find what you are looking for. So in this case, texture and mouthfeel are words that aren't exactly the same, but if you're thinking about eating something and the way that it feels in your mouth and the texture of it in your mouth, then you might be happy to find words where the researcher used the word texture or where they used the slightly more specific term mouthfeel. So you can say, I want results that have texture, or I want results that have the word mouthfeel, or I'm happy enough to have results that have both of those. So they could have both texture and mouthfeel in them. And if we look down below the and and the or, we get sort of trying to illustrate how you can combine and and or, and you'll do that very often in building a search. So here we have one where we have bread on the one hand, and then on the other hand, we have texture or mouthfeel. And when we combine bread and then texture or mouthfeel, then we'll get results that always have the word bread in them. And then they would also always have to have the word texture in them or the word mouthfeel, or they could have all three words bread and texture and mouthfeel. So that's a way to make a search a little bit more comprehensive, but still focusing in on what you want. Not is quite a drastic Boolean operator. With not, you remove all the results that have a particular word in them. So you might be doing research on potatoes, but you don't want information about sweet potatoes. So you could formulate a search that was potato, not sweet. 
The problem with a search like that is you don't see, as soon as you remove a whole bunch of, of results, you're not seeing what you're missing. So you don't know if they're actually using the term suite in a way that you hadn't imagined that they might do. So it's really something that you only really want to use with great caution, never in the first place, but it's something that I'm going to show you is a really useful tool for trying to figure out what's going on with a search when you're not entirely sure. So it's something that I tend not to use in building a search, except as a tool to diagnose what's happening when I'm not entirely sure. So we will go through that. So now we're done with the PowerPoint and I'm going to move on to actually looking at how we do this in the platform. Okay, so now I'm logged in to FSTA on the EBSCOhost platform and I am here on the basic search screen, which is just a single search box. And I'm only going to spend a little tiny bit of time here uh, to show you something that uh, I think is worth flagging because it's something that people don't necessarily realize is happening and they don't necessarily expect it to be happening. So if I type green and T, then I'm saying that green needs to be in the results and the word T has to be in the results. So I hit search and I get 10,000 results here. Now, in some tools that you use, if you don't type and, then there actually is an and there. So that's how it's treated by the search engine or the search box. But in the EBSCO host platform, the default setting is to treat it a little bit differently. So if I just search green tea without the and in there, you'll see I get slightly fewer results. I only get 8,000 results. And that's because what's happening here is not that these are treated as though there's an and in them. It's also not treated as though it's a phrase. So green tea, if I do that, then I only get 7,000 and some results, um, but it's doing something in between. And what it's doing is saying that these are actually needing to be near each other. So they need to be, uh, the default setting on the platform is that these need to be within five words of each other if you don't type anything in between them. And the thinking behind that is that often when you're searching two words and you don't put an end between them, it's because they're kind of a phrase and you're thinking that they should be near each other. So it's actually really powerful to do that. But if you don't realize that that's happening, then you may think that you're searching it like all the greens and all the teas, and you're not actually doing that. So it's just a, a, the a sort of a heads up, be aware of this, um, because it can be changed if you want it to be changed on the administrative settings. And it's, it's not a bad thing, but it can be a confusing thing if you just don't know quite what's going on with that and are assuming otherwise. So now I'm going to actually jump into advanced search instead because I think that advanced search is the field that works really well for building Boolean searches. And I'm gonna clear out. We can see you have a clear button here to clear your boxes. And so I'm going to use this to build a search. And the thing that works really well on advanced search is to use one concept per box and even though there's a pull down here with the other Boolean operators, I think it always works best to keep and as the Boolean operator that you use here. So let's do a quick search. Do food safety as a phrase. And hit search. And if I scroll down here, I'm actually going to quickly clear out my green tea searches. So delete those. 
So here we have food safety and we have 252,000 results. We're going to add another concepts, salmonella. And as we're getting more specific, you can guess whether our result numbers will go up or down. And if you guess down, you were correct. So now we have to have both those words, those terms, or the phrase um, food safety and the word salmonella in each of our results. And we can get more specific. So we can add poultry. And the results go down again. So we're getting more and more specific. And then we could add by adding a row here with the plus sign, another concept, so inhib inhibition. So we are thinking of ways to inhibit, and I think I'll actually truncate that. So I can have inhibit or inhibition, um, and there may well be other versions that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. Hit search, and it gets even more specific, and add yet another rule roll and we can add the word feed. So thinking that we're thinking about the way that feed can transmit salmonella into poultry and we want to inhibit this for the sake of food safety. So hit search again and you can see we've gotten down to 123 results. If I scroll down a little bit to see these results, we'll know that each of them have all five of our terms in them. So inhibition, poultry, feeds, food safety, salmonella. Um, and that will be true of every single one of these results. So you can see how powerful this is from getting us from an absolutely unmanageable number of results down to a very manageable number of results to scan through, and we know they will be on target for us. So that is how we are building a search with AND, and I'm going to delete those, so clear out my search history again. And then I'm going to start thinking about ORs. So I'll clear my searches again as well. And so for OR, we're going to start to think about birds again on a bird theme. Um, so emu, big bird, we search that and we get 176 results. And we can imagine that we want to think not just about the big emus, but also the big ostriches. Now you can see I've added emu to ostrich or, and I will be getting results that have both of those. And if I scroll down, I can see here's ostrich and emu in the title, ostrich and emu in the title, ostrich and emu in the title. I can then go ahead and add even another one, another big bird, Rhea. And I'm going to change this field. So I'm just looking at the title because this is a very easy way to scan what's going on. And we assume that, whoops, well, the problem with that is that I've, I've restricted this to the title and before I was looking at all fields, um, but there will be even more of these that have all of the big birds in the title. Pardon me, sorry, I misspoke. Some of them have all three of them. Some of them just have two emu or ost and ostrich. This one has ostrich and rhea and ostrich and emu again. And when we scroll down, we will start to get to some like this one that only has emu in it. So by connecting those three birds with an or, 
we're saying we're happy enough to get research that's about emu, we're happy enough to get it about ostriches, or we're happy enough to get it about uh, the, the rias. So you'll notice that I kept all of these in a single search box and I typed my or in between. And so that is really good practice when you're searching um, to take advantage of each search box as collecting one of your concepts. And then if you want to add a second concept, then you can add it into a second box. So if I add eggs, and I'm going to again make that into a title, search, we scroll down, then we have 29 results, and they could have all three of the birds plus eggs, or they could have any one of the bird plus eggs in them. So you can see how it's working for us. So if I very quickly try to change this, so I'm going to um, take out eggs, move these down, put eggs in the top box, but for instance, add these in three boxes. Put them in title, in the title field. Put the brackets there, but say that it's emu and ostrich. I mean, pardon, emu or ostrich or rhea. Then hit search. We know that when we had the three of them in a single box, we got 29 results. Now we're getting far, far, far more results. We're getting 299 results. If we look at it, the searches, here we have title for emu or ostrich or rhea and title for eggs. Here we have title for eggs and title for emu or title for ostrich or title for rhea. So they seem to be the same search, but we're getting very different numbers of results. So if we want to see what's going on with that, we're trying to understand why that's happening, we can use that very, very, very useful not. And to use not, the first thing to remember is to clear your search boxes. And then you've got a search ID number next to all of your searches here in search history. So you can take the one that is the bigger one. So search five and then say not search four. So not the smaller one. So that that allows you to see what is it that you're getting, what's left over when you take out the ones that you know are working the way you want it to work. So we'll type S5, not S4. And when we do, we get 270 results, so we knew or we thought we'd probably get that number. But right away we see, okay, so we're having ostrich, emu, and rhea in the title, but no egg. Here we're having ostrich in the title, but no egg, etc. So it's not constructed the search quite the way that we thought that it would. And so this is just to reinforce how useful it is to make sure that you keep your or concepts in a single search box and connect them with or there, and then just use the default ands to separate the search boxes and to have a different concept in each and every box. So I'm going to see if there's a question. Uh, there's a, um, a comment that in the food safety search, you search food safety and poultry, but there's, there's also results that don't feature the word poultry, but features words like chicken or duck. So this is a good question. I have to go back to that. Let me see if I saved that. No, I cleared out that search. 
So this is where we can use the not to try to figure out what's going on. And another question is to, to um, comment on the question marks and parentheses and asterisk. Okay, so there's a lot to cover here. Um, so with the food safety, I am going to do this in the title because that's always the quickest way to actually look and see what's happening instead of looking at this, the full record. So what I will say, because I've just typed the food safety inside quotation marks, and I was asked to talk about that a bit. And so when you type a phrase, two words that belong together um, to capture the sense of, of the concept, so food safety, like food is one thing, safety is another thing, but food safety is quite a specific concept. If you type the two words inside quotation marks, then you are telling the database that you only want results where these two words are also typed next to each other. So you don't want ones where food is um, in the title and safety is somewhere in the abstract, or you don't want ones where food is like three words away from safety, because in order to actually get that concept, you need those two words to be together. So you're keeping them together. Um, let us go and look for food safety and poultry in the title. And so I'm going to look at the results and we've got 76. So one thing to do when you're checking, you want to make sure you're getting a good view of what's happening, is you can change it from relevance to date newest because of the default relevance display will always show the ones that fit what you typed best. So it can save you scrolling if you go to the sort by date. So here we are having food safety and poultry, food safety and poultry. Poultry, food safety, poultry, food safety, poultry, food safety. So it's looking to me as though it is working. And I realized that we've gotten far fewer results by only looking at the title. But I do find that in general, if there's something else going on, it will show up in the title unless you've only got like 10 titles to work with. So I'm not quite sure what it is that that was showing up. So I will probably have to get back to you with that, that question because it does look to me as though it's working the way that we were hoping it would work. Um, but I may be missing something. So let me know if I'm missing something. So, okay, so the other questions that we got were about truncation. So with, so if I typed the word toxin or toxic, I'll type toxic. If I search for toxic uh, as is, then the database will find me results that have toxic. And then it'll also find me ones that have the plural toxics. So it does this automatic working to find both the plurals and, and the singular version of a word, which is really handy. But if I add an asterisk, then I'm telling the database that I want to find results that have the letters that I've typed, T-O-X-I-C, and then any results that are longer as well. So I can have ones, I'll have ones that are just toxic and I'll have ones that are toxics with an S, but then I will also get things like toxicity, um, toxicinetics. Um, I'm trying to think there's all sorts of possibilities. So let's just search it. 
So we get 8,000. You can see when we just typed toxic, we got 2,000. So we've gotten quite a few more results by truncating it. And here's one with toxicity. Um, toxic metals. So rather than making you watch me scroll forever, let's try the not again. So let's build a search here of ones that we know, toxic or toxics. Ah, sorry, or toxicity. Now, you asked about the parentheses or brackets. And this is a way to indicate that these words need to stay together. So when we keep them in one search box, we don't actually need to type it that way, because as you can see, the database does it for us. So here we've got the emu or ostrich or rhea all grouped together inside the brackets, the parentheses. And that is a way to say these are one lump concept together. So I've done it. You can do it or not do it when you're searching in a single box. It will do it for you anyway. So it's not a bad idea to do it. So here I've got toxic or toxics or toxicity. And here I have toxic that has been truncated and the toxic that has been truncated is slightly more than our three versions of toxic that I could think of. So I'll clear the search and I'll look at the numbers again. So S9 is the bigger one. So I'll type S9, not S10. And so we've got a thousand something. So of course, toxological, um, toxo, toxico infection, toxological, toxicology hyphenated historical, um, toxiokinetic. So so those are other versions of the truncated toxic that we can get. So you can see what a very, very, very powerful tool truncation is. So that's really a whirlwind introduction to using the Boolean operators on the EBSCOhost platform for FSTA. So if there are any other questions, I'd be really happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, I'm really happy to have questions come in later. We do have a blog post that I wrote uh, specifically about using Boolean operators that we can send out along with the recording. So if you want another resource to think about how to use it, we're always really happy to get questions if you're building a search and have any questions about the way to do it most efficiently. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for coming today.